Glastonbury is like a wonderful cauldron of all sorts of different energies and all sorts of mixes and all sorts of things bubbling to the surface. If you align yourself with the sacred energies of this place, you can evolve and you can grow and you can heal. It is a world centre through which an axis passes and it's a modern temple. It's a temple that's coming into being today that fulfills the, the adage, as above, so below. Let the order of the heavens be made manifest upon the earth. When you see that hill, when you see the tour, it's been as important as long as someone's been looking at it. But who that someone is, you know, whether it's the consciousness of a human being or the consciousness of something else looking at it. There's so many different magical tales and myths and things that seem to originate from Glastonbury. And I think it's, it's wonderful that it becomes a new Glastonbury to every generation and to every spiritual path or spiritual development that takes root here over the years. Goodness me, our true national anthem and did those feet in ancient times. I mean, why Glastonbury? Why is it here that the Saxon kings called it the holiest earth in England? Why here? Why not some other monastery somewhere else? Why is it here that there are these strange bones? Arthur and Guinevere, I mean, you know, it's not, not in London or Jerusalem or, you know, Bethlehem here in Glastonbury. There is an overlighting presence in Glastonbury which has a, has a clear idea of how to bring Glastonbury into its full potential. And this overlighting energy has many names. The people can respond to the company of Avalon who are amongst others like the angel of Glastonbury. Others prefer the goddess of Glastonbury. It is actually one entity, not more than one, and it knows exactly what it needs. Something's here, isn't it? Because most of the people that you talk to who feel some sort of calling, feel that they've been called by something, or even someone. You know, Glastonbury called me and I came. It's almost like a mantra in the town sometimes. The experience of Glastonbury really is what you're searching for. Uh, and I think it goes back to connecting with the natural force of the land. And I think if your intent is pure, I think the land almost reads you like a credit card. It reads your PIN number and it says, OK, you need this or that to make yourself holy. And I mean that with a W in front of the word. And you are attracted to certain parts of Glastonbury depending on what it is that you need to bring yourself back into a fully functional being. If you're born into a culture, you take that particular culture for granted. If you're born in Glastonbury, the energies and the mythology and the archetypal stuff that's going on here doesn't touch you because you, it, it's what you're used to, it's what you're accustomed to. There are uh, the older generation of local people who don't like all the new age hippie stuff. They would rather Glastonbury was quieter and more normal, but equally they are just not interested. There, there is a push for it to become uh, more of a Somerset market town. The tourism that Glastonbury thrives on is the new age, and, and a Somerset market town wouldn't thrive in the same way. And so the locals have to deal with it. Every human being is kind of like the litmus paper of that place. Nobody can create an idea. You, know, you receive ideas. So wherever you are, it's the land speaking through you. Wherever you sit and meditate, the energy of that environment, pong, think about this, think about that. Well, oh, this is an idea. And Glastonbury does that. Glastonbury is a really deeply sacred place because it's a long, long tradition of interchange between the elementals and the powers of this place and the spirits of this place and human seekers, human pilgrims coming here to learn and to heal and to grow. 
other roots of all the trees throughout all of the world, throughout the whole of Gaia, throughout the whole of Mother Earth. When we come here, we have to learn to manifest those spiritual gifts from the world below and the world above. And we have to learn how to live with those things and work with those things and grow into our potential as human beings here and now, present in the moment in life. It can be full of challenges, but it can also be full of miracles and wonders and magic. When people come to the Isle of Avalon, it's the little self gets put to one side and they have to start listening to their soul. And it can be quite a painful process, this coming to terms with why you're actually here. And there's all sorts of mischievous stuff out there as well, so discrimination is very important. In our world at the moment, Glastonbury presents one face to a mainstream culture which is provocative and flaky, and Glastonbury presents another face to people who are open-hearted, inquiring, creative, prepared to take a little bit of a risk, in which case Glastonbury becomes the most extraordinary model of diversity and eccentricity that's just absolutely full of um, hidden treasures and explicit treasures and vulgarity, it's human. You know, and commercial crass stuff, of course it's human, right? You know, it can't be perfect, right? If the Earth is a being, if, if you go along with James Lovelock's idea of Gaia, some sort of being, the earth is a being, and the Glastonbury is its heart. What are we putting into that system? What are we putting into the heart of the world? Interestingly enough though, it has obviously become a new age mecca. And that's very interesting because in the Glastonbury Zodiac, um, Glastonbury is Aquarius, and we're coming into the age of Aquarius. So that seems to be very deliberate too. If you're going to have a town or a centre for a paradigm shift, Glastonbury, Aquarius, Heart Chakra, it all kind of gels together there. And it's hard to prove any of it. You know, it's all people's dreamings, really, or, or, or poetic metaphors for the land, really. It's one of the great sort of spiritual gifts that Glastonbury offers is how to negotiate different points of view and different ways of perceiving spirit and God. If you like, there are a hundred paths to the one and we each have to find what works for us. The challenge of Glastonbury is to be, befriend and support and love people on every credible path, even though it's utterly different to yours. And you are in no way threatened as a human community is very welcoming of diversity. At the Chalice Well ceremony the other day, there were 70 odd different faiths that were represented. Um, so what people can do in Glastonbury is they can come to this town, they can come to this landscape, they can come into this energy field, they can come into this inner cosmos of many different thought forms and archetypes. And at the same time, there are practitioners and teachers of different traditions. And the seeker can taste. We all seek a new age. We all seek a new way of doing things. And that's what Glastonbury is about today. If Glastonbury and all its wealth of tradition and symbol and image could, could be some kind of melting pot, I think it is functioning in that way. A place where all the different myths and symbols can sit together, you know, happily and, and spiritually inform us. I, th I think it can find a way of functioning in the modern age. We're being asked now to come into that greater balance. This is the Holy Grail of the quest.